Why did you decide to focus on in silico biology in your research in cell factories? My group has been building computer models of cell function uh, for over 20 years now. And these computer models will describe all functions of a cell. We now are, have the ability to genetically modify the, the cells that we have mathematical models of and therefore engineer them. The best application of this engineering capability is for metabolic engineering uh, and to design and build cell factories. And that's one of the new aspects of this center is that we actually have computer models like the car industry does or like the aerospace industry does to predict designs and calculate designs before we build them. How long time would you think it takes before you can have a breakthrough, a real breakthrough in your research in cell factories? The center has many good people involved in it. And as you know, it's hard to predict uh, the outcome of science often. But there is one uh, particular example I can give you of many potential breakthroughs in the center. And that breakthrough relates to the discovery that we now know that certain bacteria can accept electrons. You can literally plug them in and charge them up. We don't understand that process yet in biochemical or genetic terms, but if we are able to gain that understanding and if we are able to manipulate those cells and, and metabolically engineer them, that means that the uh, a range of products we can make economically will grow dramatically. In particular, the breakthrough would be the potential to make biofuels economically in this way. Which oil-based processes would you think would be replaced by cell factories? So the oil that comes out of the ground and goes into the petrochemical industry is split roughly 9 to 1 for fuels and chemicals. Fuels are very inexpensive uh, products. Uh, as we all know, we don't want to pay a lot for fuel, whereas chemicals can be intermediate to very expensive. We have chosen to look at the production of chemicals, uh, fine chemicals, um, uh, specialty chemicals, flavors, fragrances, coloring agents, uh, commodity chemicals, industrial chemicals in the center. Most of these compounds will cost more than two and a half dollars per kilo and uh, that price range for a product is currently feasible uh, with uh, a fermentation process. So that's why we are focusing there first. So if we succeed we might be able to replace you know 10 percent of the use of, of oil. The other 90 percent is uh, used for fuel production and um, uh, it is uncertain whether we are able to uh, make biofuels cheaper than petrochemically derived fuels. I should add an interesting number for the audience here, just in terms of the magnitudes. So if we look at the GDP of the whole world, it's around 55 to 60 trillion dollars a year. The chemical industry that I just described is about three trillion dollars a year. So the in and that's about 5% of the world's GDP. So the industry we are looking at addressing and potentially revolutionizing is huge. Would you have any idea what impact will the said factory discovery have on the society? First of all, uh, uh, if we have these breakthroughs and if we can use cell factories to make all chemicals, we will certainly move more towards a sustainable lifestyle because of the bio use of biomass that's sustainable. And therefore, of course, the name of the center is Center for Biosustainability. So the center will help mankind to move towards a sustainable lifestyle. What is the biggest challenge or change in society if we are switching from an oil-based industry to a bio-based industry? So there are many challenges we have to work on, um, the technical challenges, the biochemistry, the genetics, and all of the science. We are equipped to deal with that, uh, to develop the technology. As you asked earlier, some of those might be breakthroughs, some of those might be incremental uh, improvements. 
the challenge, the grand challenge associated to going to completely uh, uh, into a completely sustainable lifestyle based on bioprocessing will be the ability to produce enough biomass to ferment or to change into, into uh, chemicals or fuels. As I said earlier, the ratio is about 10 to 1 between chemicals and fuels and there is enough biomass and we can produce enough biomass to address the chemical side of the equation. The amount of fuel that mankind uses is enormous. So if we actually want to make all of our fuels biologically, we will run into a big challenge with the management of our land mass and the ability to generate all of that biomass that is required to produce uh, that gigantic amount of fuel we use every day. Bernard Pelsen, it was great to have you here.